Our topic of the day is Network Address Translations, NAT. So NAT translates an IP address that's carried in an IPv4 address into another address. So basically this NAT is used to translate the private address into public address so that uh, devices can be communicated across private and public network. So to elevate the public IPv4 address shortage caused by the internet expansions, we have NAT over here as our temporary solutions. Our objective for this topic are as following. Firstly, we will be able to recognize NAT application scenarios and understand how the NATs work as well as how to configure NATs on Huawei Firewall. This topic is divided into four parts. Firstly, we have the NAT principle. Then we are going to see the source NAT, followed by the server mapping, and finally the application scenario. Firstly, let's talk about the background of uh, the NAT technology. Now, the NAT technology itself is actually related to the uh, temporary solutions for the IPv4 before we actually come up with the idea of IPv6. Now, IPv4, IPv4 version 4 addresses that we have nowadays is about 2 to the power of 32 IP, which is about 4.3 billion of IPv4 addresses. Now, if we are going to compare this amount to the total number of human populations that we have in the world, which is about 7.3 billion. By just doing a simple mathematics calculations, we can easily see that IPv4 addresses are not enough for everyone. So before we actually come up with the IPv6, which is having about um, 2 to the power of 128 addresses, or in short, 340 on the ceilings of IPv6 address, we basically need a temporary, temporary solutions in order for us to uh, uh, fully migrate into IPv6 in future. So therefore, we have NAT over here. So um, in the IPv4, there are several technologies that is only designed for IPv4, but it doesn't actually require in IPv6 as well. So example, NAT or even IPsec VPN. Next, we see the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, NAT. When we talk about advantages, firstly, we have the uh, IP address can be reused. Next, the address translation process is transparent to user. Then, find, um, privacy protection is available to internet user. And last advantage will be the load balancing among internal servers is available. Okay, so let's talk about the first point. So IP addressing access, uh, IP addresses can be recycled and reused. This is actually uh, referring to the private IP. Now in uh, our IPv4 address, we basically has three range of private IP address that can be reused at any enclosed internal network. So by doing this way, we can actually minimize the needs of unique IP. But however, this is only applicable to internal LAN as internal LAN uh, are not able to communicate with another internal network without the net. Then next, the um, address translation process is transparent to both external user as well as internal user. For internal user, they are not aware about uh, the addresses they are going to be translated. So this is same goes to the external user. Then with the net, the uh, privacy protection can be guaranteed. This is due to uh, external network user cannot actually obtain 
the IP address of internet user. So therefore, the external user will not able uh, to know about the uh, IP address, the internal uh, network environments, service informations of the intranet user. And when we talk about the uh, load balancing, we are actually referring to the uh, configurations of load balance across multiple uh, server in the internal networks. This is actually an effort for us to uh, reduce the pressure that is actually uh, carried by each server during uh, heavy traffic flow. For the dis disadvantages, basically we have uh, following. Now monitoring is more difficult and some applications are restricted. When we talk about the network monitoring is more difficult, we basically referring to the um, example. Let's say we have a hacker who is actually launched some attack uh, over the network. And this particular hacker can actually uh, launch the attack anyway in a private network. So it's actually very hard for any authority to track on the uh, exact locations of the uh, attacker when they actually launch an attack because the IP address of the attacker has been net. Then um, when we talk about the applications wise, uh, if let's say net is mixing together with the uh, example, the IPsec VPN. So IPsec VPN actually uh, will encrypt the information that's under the uh, packet header. So if let's say you have you encrypt uh, FTP connection, then most probably we will actually have issue to translate the uh, IP address that is, that is for our encrypted packet. Next, let's us see the basic principle of NAT. Now, NAT basically can do uh, two-way translations, regardless is from uh, internal to external or internal to sorry or external to internal. So basically, when uh, NAT trans doing the translations, the translations of the IP address and port number for the internal host can be translated into the external addresses as well as the port numbers by the uh, net device. Or the translations of the external uh, addresses as well as the port number into IP address and the uh, port number of the internal host. So it can happen uh, on bi direction. Next, let us see the category of net. So in the category of NAT, basically we subdivide into two portions. Firstly, source NAT. Secondly, server mapping. Under the source NAT, we basically have address pool mode as well as the uh, outbound interface address mode, or we call it as easy IP. For the server mapping, we have the uh, static mapping, which is called NAT server. In the address pool mode, the basic idea over here is that we are going to uh, use a certain public IP. Usually these public IP are the fixed public IP that is inside a pool. When we say it's inside a pool, which means that there is a range of uh, a public IP or maybe there is a fixed number of public IP that is granted usually to example, the uh, hosting provider. So what they can do over here is that that will be able to uh, translate the internal host or internal user private addresses. Then for the outbound interface address mode or easy IP, this is usually uh, referring to a number of internal hosts are translated into the same public addresses. And this public addresses usually is a, a dynamic IP. And if we talk about the static mapping on that server, basically it is just a one-to-one, -one, one private address 
map to one public address. So this is usually when um, we want to allow the uh, public network, public network user to access the internal network. 